From Homedale to Salmon River, District 3 has several teams that don't always get their due. Stepping outside the shadows of the SIC, this is the Treasure Valley PrepCast with Logan Green. That's right. It's another edition of the Treasure Valley PrepCast here on IdahoSports.com, your weekly breakdown of everything going on in the Treasure Valley for those 3A, 2A, and 1A schools. Brandon Vanny with Logan Green. Logan, what's going on? Oh, not much. Just just uh, ready to get football underway. You know, we've got uh, just a stacked slate of games on Idaho Sports this weekend. I think 18 broadcasts from Thursday to Saturday. So if you don't have anything else to do, you just you can sit down on the website and, and spend many hours of your weekend right for some great football. Yeah, it's like a, a college football Saturday. You kind of have your pick of the litter and you can swing from game to game. And yeah, it's going to be a great time for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and I love the feature. If you've never watched a game on Idaho Sports or you've just watched one, you know, down there at the bottom, if you of the of the player, I guess you call it, there's a little thing that shows four windows and you can pull up four different games at once and and so that's it's great for tournament time, you know, you can listen to four different games at the same time, but Great opportunity to use that this weekend, especially on on Friday and Saturday. I think Saturday we have just there's multiple games going on at the same time as well as Friday night. So um, it's a great slate of games across all levels. I think we have a game at almost every level. Do, do we not? I, I believe we have one for everybody that will interest everybody around the state. Yeah, because because you think about it, uh, yeah, I like I like the quad box action. You can get four games up at once. Right. Like, think, think about it. We got some five A competition at the Rocky Mountain Rumble over in right. uh, Rexburg. Also Lewiston. We're gonna have Lewiston hosting CUNA, and we're we're gonna have some five A four A SIC broadcasts audio only this year as well. Uh, so so four A is taken care of. Three uh, A schools. We've got Marsh Valley and Sugar Salem competing at the Rocky Mountain Rumble as well. 2A, I'm going to be actually in Aberdeen to uh, right, that's broadcast right. the Tigers taking on American Falls. Uh, and then your 1As are covered at the eight-man classic. So, yeah, we've yeah. got every classification covered. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've got it all. We've even got three states covered, right? We've got Idaho, obviously, and then a bunch of teams from Utah coming up to play. And then even one from Nevada – yeah, I'm at Middleton, not where I'll be this weekend. Middleton playing uh, Elko from Nevada. So got every level level of Idaho and then three states as well. So you can't beat it. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, we're, we're taking over the entire Northwest. That's our goal. <laughs> World domination, right? We'll get there. <laughs> yeah. So so we, we've kind of put this off until the, the week leading up to really. There was three games in the state last week for football, but none, none of them in the treasure Valley, at least in right. terms of three, a two, a one. So we've kind of saved our big football preview for this week. We, we kind of covered the, uh, the SRV, the uh, snake river Valley conference last week, those three, a schools, but this week we're going to work. This is the preview extravaganza. We're going to tell you everything you need to know about those two, a and one, a programs in the treasure Valley. Logan, are you ready? I'm ready. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm ready to go. Okay. Let's start in that two-way Western Idaho conference uh, in the preseason coaches poll. Melba was picked as the almost like a reluctant favorite because there didn't seem to be much consensus among any of the coaches. And really beyond that, two through four up for grabs. I do think, like you said, this is wide open. And I, I agree. I, I think that's a good word for it. A hesitant or reluctant, reluctant pick uh, for Melba. And first, I want to talk about the way the two-way bracket is set up at least based on last year so last year you know you got your auto you got your automatic qualifiers your conference champions so melba earned that that slot and then outside of that there were I think, 10 total seeds outside of or there were there was three games so there were six teams that qualified um based on their max preps ranking and so those teams got in and they played against each other based on those rankings. And then they reseeded everybody after that. So Melba came in as the five seed in that tournament and actually was seeded lower than some of those play in teams. And so I think the two way there is a, there's a huge emphasis on, on playing well out of conference and for your conference to do well, because it buoys you up. We're going to get into it, but you look at a, a new Plymouth. Last year they go five and three and don't make the playoffs. 
and you look at a Malad, and I think Malad won two or three games, and Malad gets in. So because Malad played a different schedule, you know, Malad's playing West Side. You know, they 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 have a tough schedule over there in Southeast Idaho. That that that's hard. Aberdeen gets in, and you look at Aberdeen and North and uh, North Fremont, New Plymouth play each other, and uh, the last year they did, and Aberdeen won handily in that game. So you got to think that you know that that the the numbers took that into consideration, right? Saying, well, if you if you get hammered, even though you lost one conference game to Melba, you got hammered by this middle of the road team from over here. So we're going to favor these middle of the road teams from over there, at least on paper. Right. Um, and those teams showed up and did pretty well in the tournament. So it'll be interesting to see how the teams respond to that. And and I think they've done that in their scheduling this year alone. If you look, Melba has scheduled a game with North Fremont. That that's a, that's, that's a drive Brandon, right? That's yeah. Uh, it's, it's going to be at Melba. So North Fremont's coming over here, but you know, scheduling big. And I think that's, that's a big, um, thing for teams, even if you lose those games, you know, it, looking at a Malad doesn't matter. Um, as long as your seat is high and you played tough, then I, I think that's going to shake out well for teams that end up playing above themselves in in the in the or in the non conference part of their schedule. Yeah. So you talked about it where uh, the the two A especially was just really messed up last year where. Uh, this this new system that uh, awards uh, not only the seedings for the playoffs, but some of those final at large bids. It's all based upon this max preps rating, and one right. of the big, one of the big factors that is in that secret formula, quote unquote, that max preps uses is your strength of schedule. Uh, and teams are you're you're starting to see almost like a manipulation of the schedule where you're going to you're going to schedule a really good team that you know is going to rack up a lot of wins and even if you lose to that team you're you're not taking a big hit because oh right. your, your schedule is getting boosted up so right and and then no offense to a Wendell or something but you know in this case a, a win over Wendell might not mean as much as a loss to west side and you see Cole Valley is headed to west side another one another cross state event and I think you'll be there for that game down there at West Side but again scheduling tough out of conference teams even if you lose it you get the experience and it, and it helps you in the standings at the end of the year and I think that's what the conference over here needs in the two way they need those tough out of conference games to buoy everybody up and so and so we'll see how it goes because I think it's it's wide open this year uh, like we mentioned Melba picked number one by the coaches I don't know. I, you know, I, I'll save it for the end, but I'll tell you now, they're not my pick to win it. I'm not, I'm not going Melba. I think it's, it's going to be tough for the Mustangs. You've got to replace Henry Clark at quarterback. You got to replace Rose and Helm as well. You know, three, they were players of the year in their respective positions. That that's, that's extremely tough to replace. And I, you know, they, they did it last year. So those younger players have the experience, but when you, when you've lost so many people like that, um, it's going to be tough. You're bringing in a sophomore quarterback. Um, it, I don't know. I, I, that's my thought is I don't, I don't think it's Melba this year. Uh, they, they've been strong the last couple seasons, but I, I don't see the Mustangs coming out on top this season. Okay. I've got, I've got a team in my mind that I think, well, I'll tell you who I like at the end as well. And maybe, okay. <laughs> maybe it's the same team, but I, I also do. I don't think Melba will win the league this year either. It, yeah, I, I don't either. Um, so I, okay. I am just going down my list in order of how they were coaches pulled, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. no one, this is not a, I think I did start with Melba. So I think they're going to win, but, um, Nampa Christian, they look good. That <laughs> I like Nampa Christian. Um, I think a huge thing is you've got a senior quarterback in, uh, you know, Landon, Landon Cheney, who was the co-player of the year at his position, linebacker, senior Caleb Johnson coming in. You know, you've got a senior on offense leading the way, a senior um, on defense. You know, sometimes they say that that quarterback position is – or the, the linebacker is the quarterback of the defense, right? So now you've got two senior, quote, quarterbacks out there on the field at a given time. And their offensive line, four returning starters that are seniors and one that's a junior. 
So five returning starters on the offensive line, I like that. I don't care who you are at this level. If you've got people that can block and have experience and you've got four seniors on there, it's going to be tough for that defensive line to get to break through. And you better bet that back there, Cheney's going to have time. He's going to have the time he wants back there at quarterback for Nampa Christian. So Nampa Christian was the second uh, team in the preseason poll. And then I believe it was a tie for the next spot, right? Between- yes. Yeah. Between Cole Valley and New Plymouth. Um, those two teams tied for third. Um, Cole Valley, of course, they've got one of the better. Sorry, I'm, I keep looking down and looking at my my notes, right? My, my, I'll show you. I've got all these notes. It's terrible handwriting, but, you know, it does the job. Yeah, hold, hold but, that up again. Let me compare your notes to Paul Kingsbury's chicken scratch. It's pretty bad. It's pretty chicken scratchy. Yeah, that's oof, yeah, that's it's, so. So if you're watching the video, you can you can watch the video of this on the IdahoSports.com YouTube channel as well as the Facebook page. Uh, the audio only. You're you're not going to be able to see Logan's horrific handwriting. So, but you but can just get the imagine audio. it. It's pretty bad. <laughs> right. You can. I'm an accountant audio. in my in my day life, and uh, I don't need to write anything. It's all on the computer. So it's all numbers, right? You know, yeah. don't need to do anything like that. Yeah. So uh, Cole Valley can, Christian, you know, you look at them, they have one of the best quarterbacks in the state right now. And I think that's going to be a huge advantage to them. Of course, with uh, Connor or excuse Carter, me, yeah, Carter Fortin back there. Yeah. I, you know, he's been, I don't know how many I've seen them people on Twitter, just sharing stuff he's done. He's been to camps all over the Northwest. I think he went to one at Montana. He went to one over at Eastern Washington. He's, he's done showcases, he's getting his name out there and he's one of those ones that we talked about it last week in the three a where the, there's some players with D one offers, but you better bet that there's going to be some D one coaches out there watching Fortin this year. So once again, if you're playing Cole Valley, you better show up because there's somebody there that might see you play. Um, and so you got to show up and play well and Fortin's going to do well, you know, once again, uh, like I said, top five quarterback in a lot in a you know there's there's different opinions all over the interwebs right of of who's the best quarterback in the state and uh Fordon finds himself I'd say on 80 percent of those top five lists well you know, I will tell you on the idahosports.com top 10 list top right. 10 quarterbacks in the state he did make the cut so and rightfully so I, he'll be great and I am I think that that game against West side is a is a sneaky potential uh, semifinal or final matchup, you know, uh, preview. I, I think Cole Valley is really good, and obviously Westside's always strong as well. And um, sorry, I, I'm going to jump back a little bit. Um, looking at Nampa Christian, um, we talked about the schedule. So Nampa Christian, I like what they did. They play a game at Fruitland, so a top level three A team, and then they play a game at Declo, who was a semifinalist and. A, a snow game away from beating West side in the playoffs. I was there with Paul and I honestly thought that Declo was the better team in that game. Mm-hmm. I thought they were better than West side. I thought they should have beat them. Um, Stegelmeyer there at West side just had a, a, a freak 50 yard run where in, in the, I mean, it was snow was blowing this way and, um, and then Declo just they kept turning the ball was slick and they 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 could just turnovers, but they were always in West Side territory, just couldn't punch it in. Anyways, that's a different prep cast, right? But but um a good game for Nampa Christian to go over and play Declo. So I think that that prepares them well to to at least try and sneak a spot into the playoffs. And sorry, if we go back to Cole Valley, I think you, you can't discredit the the addition of of Coach McClellan, right? You you throw an NFL coach onto any uh, a player that's played in the NFL. Um, just like at Fruitland, they've got Jordan Gross. You, you, you throw them out there, the team's going to listen. Like you've got a guy that says, look, guys, I played at a small school in Idaho. I played in this conference. You know, I went to Marsing. I, I've played at this level, and I, I won a Super Bowl. I can show you how to get there. And so we'll see how that that bodes out for, for Cole Valley this season. Yeah, and in an odd twist, uh, of course, Shea McClellan was a great NFL linebacker, but he is going to be the offensive coordinator right. for Cole Valley Christian. And we did we did a great interview with uh, Shea earlier this summer, actually. You can actually get that uh, interview on our YouTube channel or the old IdahoSports.com prepcast feed. Um, but he talked about, he said, 
I only talked to schools that said, yes, we want you to coach on offense. He, he said, cause everybody just assumed that, Oh, he wants to do defense defense. And, and so he actually said through that process, the list actually got actually pretty small, pretty quickly. And I asked him about Marcin, right? Because that's where he played mm-hmm. and that's a, a conference rival of Cold Valley Christian. He said Marcin didn't even return his phone calls or, or get back to him. And he said he was so like hurt and disappointed by that. Wow. So he he kind of got like dissed by his ho- home school of Marcin. And uh, I, he, let's just say he's going to be very motivated when Cold Valley. Yeah. Comes. Yeah. Whenever, whenever those relationships have a little sour bite to them, it, uh, it, uh, turns out a little brutal. And, and, you know, I, I think Marcin probably could have used the help. Uh, you know, they've been picked last this year. They're extremely young this year. Um, and, and I think that, uh, I think they're going to struggle and it would have been great for them to have somebody like that there, you know, for the Huskies to help them along the way. Yeah. Um, I guess, but, I, sorry, real quick. I don't want to mischaracterize. So, he, so he said that it, it's not like he called them and then they didn't call back. Right. But, but he put it out there that he was interested and then they never reached out to him. So oh, okay. He, okay. There we but go. He, but he thought that, I mean, that was kind of a no, that it was just automatic and they didn't even reach out. So mm. anyways, <laughs> so, well, maybe they'll come back out to him. Right. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want Shane McClellan to be angry at me. And no, we're spreading him. gossip. Nope. Just kidding. Right. Shay. Listen to Brandon. Listen to Brandon. <laughs> He told the truth. We're not right. gossiping. Yeah. Okay. So continue. Uh, with the yeah. Line. So fine. I mean, we'll just, uh, we won't talk too much. I, I think Marsing, um, they, they were picked last and, and I, I think they'll struggle. We'll see how they do this year. They've got some, some games that'll kind of help them out. I think this season, um, early on in the season, some, some lower level games and maybe get some confidence boosted in them. Um, and then take that into conference because if you can boost that confidence and then, win all your conference games doesn't matter who you played out of conference, right? Um, it, you you can have this amazing out of schedule or out of conference schedule, but then win, lose a bunch of in conference games and it really doesn't do anything for you. Uh, so you come in, win four games and you're in, I mean, that, that, that's all that there is to it. Um, but if we go back to new Plymouth, um, they're another one that they lost a lot of players. They lost, um, is it Vian Lyman and, and Lindman, their top three running backs accounted for fifteen hundred yards last year. That's a that's a lot of that's a lot of offense to replace. Um, but the, once again, they went three and one in their in their non conference games or in their conference, but it wasn't good enough to get in. So we'll see that again. They've 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 scheduled a bunch of three A teams this year. They've got they've got Fruitland or no, they've got Payette, they've got Parma and Grangeville. So um, or excuse me, McCall. So they have three, three, a teams, uh, that, and last year, what's funny is they beat Parma and they beat Payette, but they still didn't get in. Um, uh, those two teams didn't have great seasons themselves. So it kind of ended up hurting them, but so hope for them, they hope that those two teams do a little bit better, but McCall should be strong. McCall is always tough. McCall Donnelly. So yeah, that, that's a tough game to schedule out of conference as well, but, they have four offensive linemen coming back. So once again, I, I, I think you look at Nampa Christian and you look at New Plymouth with four returning, four or five returning offensive linemen and looking at the conference and how young it is, I, I think that's that's just as critical as anything else. Yeah, it's it's almost better. You're talking about the schedule. It's, it's almost better to schedule a Weezer and, and lose 35 nothing than it is to schedule yeah. a Parma and win because it – we talked about it already. So, yeah. Okay. So, so that's how the coaches poll looks in the preseason for, for the WIC. What, what do you, who do you like? I, I think I know the answer based upon kind of how you've been talking, but yeah. you tell me. I, I like Nampa Christian. That's, that's who I like. I think they take it. I think it comes down to them and Cole Valley. And I think that game decides it. I think they both win all their conference games except against each other. And uh, I, I'm going to say, I'm going to give the edge to Nampa Christian. Um, but whoever wins that matchup, I think gets the automatic bid from the conference. That's uh, that's my thought, Brandon. What do you got? I like Coal Valley Christian. Okay, I like. So last year they went three and four. The record was a little deceptive because uh, Carter Fortin, the great quarterback we were talking right. about, ended up missing. You know, almost half of the season with injury, and so they didn't even have him um, at their disposal. 
That being said, talking to their coach, Mark Moreno, he says, we really only lost two impact starters from last year's team. And we were young. We had a bunch of sophomores out there. So mm-hmm. they bring almost everybody back, including Carter Fortin, for what they hope is a full season. And those sophomores that kind of took their lumps last year are now seasoned vets. So, but, but I agree. Napa Christian also yeah. is going to be very good. And, you know, I've got, I flip flopped three or four times today. I've said, nope, it's Cole Valley. And then I say, nope, it's Napa Christian. But I just, I really like the offensive lineman at Nampa Christian. I just think that's going to make a huge difference. And I think having four seniors on that line, it, it's their time. It's their time to, to make it known. Um, but I think it's going to come down to that Cole Valley Christian, Nampa Christian um, game during the season. And I think the winner gets the automatic bid. And I wouldn't count the other one out of, of getting, I think they'll do well non-conference. I would love to see that Nampa Christian uh, game against Declo and then as well Cole Valley headed to West Side. Um, I think those will be. I think those two games will show us if those two teams belong, because right, those are two semifinal teams from last year. One's a state champion. One barely lost to the other, and I think that's going to show us if those two teams deserve those automatic bids. If they if they don't beat that team, well, we'll, we'll find out. But I think beating one of those teams and not winning the conference might cement their spot in having that auto bid. Um, let, yeah. Let's just say, you know, Cole Valley goes and beats West Side, but then they lose to Nampa Christian. I think having that win under their belt, I think that'll push them over and get them that auto bid when the time rolls around. Yeah, last year, all five teams from District 5 made the 2A postseason. That won't happen again, uh, especially because teams up north, you know, St. Mary's last year only played right. four games and and – weren't able to play a full schedule. I feel pretty good about their chances to get an at-large bid. They're playing Lakeland this year, which is going to be right. a pretty good 4A team. So, yeah, I, and the 2A is going to – the WIC is going to get more than one team in for sure. It, 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 last year was just such a weird year too. So I, I think this year will, the waters will level out, and I think we'll see it um, – I think we'll see a little shake up there. Like you said, everybody made it over there in East Idaho, and – I, I really like those two teams, though. I like them to make noise, and, and and honestly, I think New Plymouth could sneak around too and come in third. Um, I like once again, I just like the depth on the offensive line. I think if if your quarterback has time, if you know, Carter Fortin has the time back there, he's going to make the throw, and so it'll be interesting to see how uh, he does with Coach McClellan, right? Um, an NFL level uh, coordinator coaching this guy. I I. I I'm excited to see to see how that goes during the season. Yeah, uh, pretty much every week in the in the WIC is going to be pretty. You got to keep your eye on it because it's going to be unpredictable throughout the whole season. So. Yeah, wide open, wide yeah. open. Yeah, let's move on to the one A D one ranks. The uh, also the Western Idaho Conference. This one seems a little more clear cut, Logan. Uh, what are your? Oh thoughts? yeah, yeah. This this there's no suspense here, and I think that everybody out there agrees. I don't think I am being. Um, groundbreaking or you are and saying that notice is going to run away with this thing. And, and like Paul always says, prove, prove us wrong. Like I'd love to be proven wrong. I'd love to see somebody show up, you know, if Idaho city wants to come and beat them by 40, great, let's see it. But I just think that, that notice they didn't, they didn't lose hardly anybody. And, uh, and that they've got almost everybody back. You look at their, their offense with, Caden Clements, Carter Woodland, Woodland, and Kellen Parks. It's tough. It, it, it's going to be tough to beat them. They've got everybody back. Um, they were 7-1 and one last year with that only loss coming against Lighthouse, Christian, in the in the playoffs. And that's really the blemish that that I, I'd like to see from notice. They made the playoffs the last couple of years, but just kind of – I mean, they got beat pretty handily by Lighthouse. It really wasn't close, and Lighthouse was third in their conference. You know, they, they had to play with Raft River in Oakley, um, and they came over over here. I, I When I say over here, I live in Middleton, close to notice. So, um, But they, they took it to them, um, and and we we need to see something more from notice in the playoffs before I say they're a, you know, they're a dark horse or, you know, I like them come October and November. Uh, we need to see more, but I think their offense is going to be explosive, especially – with quarterback Caden Clemens. He is a phenomenal quarterback. We saw him a couple of times last year, uh, just made some highlight plays. Clemens back there with Woodland to his left. 
It's a low snap. Clemens picks it up. He's going to go deep, and he's got a man out there. Beautiful catch, and he's going to – is he in? He is. Touchdown. Notice. Long 44-yard touchdown pass from Caden Clemens. Yeah, so a, a great clip. Uh, you, you had to listen to my voice again there, um, but we you know, covered that. For you listening, that was just a, a clip from the, the Notice Idaho City game last year. Caden Clemens, just a bomb down the field. That ball traveled about 40 yards in the air, just right in the bread basket. Um, I thought he was clearly in, but uh, defense caught up and, and caught him right at the goal. He made it in. He did make it in, but... Uh, but it's just a great play, and I think you're going to see more of that, and I think the other teams in the conference, they're going to be seeing a lot of backs. <laughs> they're not going to be seeing the front. They're going to be seeing the backs of those wide receivers, and it's going to be tough to contain notice this year, and I really like them. I really yeah, like them. I think you you look at it in tiers, right? Notice is kind of in their own tier. Then I feel like Idaho City and Wilder are pretty similar. Right. And, and then you've got Rimrock and, and Greenleaf friends uh, right. at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. No, or Idaho City was the one team that really gave Notice trouble um, in that game. Notice won by ah, I can't remember a touchdown, two or three touchdowns, um, but it was a lot closer than that. They didn't pull away till late in that game. And and the thing is, is you look back in Idaho City, it's it's kind of funny. They had a play at the end of the half. Uh, they called a timeout with two or three seconds left. And they threw a long pass, and I can't remember. I think it was Rapicon had the ball. And uh, running down the, the sideline for Idaho City, and he kind of slowed up at the end, thought that no one was behind him, um, was about to walk in the end zone, and, and somebody caught up to him and brought him down about the two-yard line. And, uh, you know, if he didn't have done that, I don't. that game would have been a lot different. It would have been a very different ending. I, I think Idaho City would have taken the lead into the half with that. So, I think Idaho City is right there. Uh, they're ready to take that step, and I, I think that if anybody's going to give notice any problems, that that it, it is Idaho City. Yeah, and then I feel and like Wilder Idaho is, City, okay. Rapicon, like we mentioned, he he was a running back last year. And he's going to be moving to quarterback, so that's going to be an interesting uh, change for the Wildcats. And I think it's going to be honestly a good one. He's a great athlete, and sometimes you just put your best player back there and see what he can do with his feet. I think he's going to be a huge dual threat quarterback and that he's going to find success on the ground. And that game we saw last year, he just uh, he, he would dance back there in the backfield and find the space and get open. And I, I think it's going to be a good move for the Wildcats, and uh, we'll see what he can do back there at quarterback and if, if they can challenge notice this year. Yeah, I, I, do, I do think those are the two teams at the top. Wilder is... You know, they're bringing some guys back, but they lost some guys as well. They're four and four yeah. last year. I think it's probably going to be pretty similar. The thing with Wilder, so Wilder is the one. So Wilder and Idaho City, right? They played a phenomenal game last year. If you didn't hear about it, Wilder was down 42 to 14 in the third quarter of that game. They won it 64 to 54. They, they, incredible. They scored 50 points in the second half and won a game in which they were down what, four touchdowns. Just uh, I think that's the best thing about eight-man football. Anything can happen. Down by two, down by four touchdowns, no big deal. We can still win by 10. Like, that's the thing. They didn't just win. They won by 10. It was a two-score game. <laughs> just, uh, just, just, just a phenomenal game. But I, I really need to see more from their defense this year. In the last three games, they gave up over 50 points a game. Um, they they got to tighten that down because if, if they – they got to be able to score, and right now it looks like they're uh, they're they're trying to figure out who their key players are, who is going to be that quarterback, who's going to be that that key running back, and they're they're going to be shuffling a lot of pieces. And if they're trying to play uh, catch up, it's not going to work. Um, the defense has really got to show up this year for Wilder to to help make a difference. Yeah, and then, and then the last two teams, Rimrock is a team that's really behind the eight ball. They didn't even have a coach hired until the very end of July, Sam Ward is his name. Right. And he comes from Montana. Um, so it, uh, learning curve there. And then Greenlee friends is still a relatively new program as well. And they're still kind of getting their footing also. Right. I, you know, I, I think Rimrock um, definitely a couple steps ahead. Greenleaf Greenleaf played a lot of JV games last year. 
uh, just trying to get settled in. But this year they do have a couple of of road games at uh, at the varsity level. So I'd look to see for them to take a little bit of a step forward, especially after last year it was a lot of their kids' first games, first time playing football. Uh, so, you know, I, I think they'll be a little bit better. But um, I Rimrock finished the season well last year, won their last two games and but by a combined 100 points. So um, even though you get a new coach, it's a great way to end the season. So we'll see how it shakes out. But I, I think it's notices to lose. And, uh, you know, notice can't look ahead at anything. Um, but – but they need to prepare for November. I think they need to work. You know, they got things to work on. They're they're a great team, um, but we saw it last year. Even though they were undefeated, they ended up getting uh, getting beat pretty handily at home in the first round of the playoffs to a team that finished third in their conference. So uh, they're good, but I don't think they're there yet. We well, we they need to prove it to us, right? They need to show us that they can take that next step and get past uh, that first round of the playoffs. Yeah, I will say in the first uh, media poll of the season, the uh, the, the media people that vote on the uh, top five, uh, notice did check in at number four, and at number five, right below him, Lighthouse Christian. So <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, so people people like the people like the Pirates over the Lions. We'll see how it shakes out. Yeah, for sure. So and then, and then I should mention as well, Greenleaf Friends is uh, they're kind of co oping with Centennial Baptist this year. Uh, Centennial Baptist still doesn't have enough kids to go on their own. So they're co-oping with Greenleaf. So there'll be maybe a couple Centennial Baptist kids playing with Greenleaf as well. So, all right, let's move on to one AD two, the long pin conference. I got to be honest. There was not really much of a consensus here either when the coaches filled out their ballots for the preseason coaches poll. But what do you think? Right. I think that the, uh, I think that the long pin um, now people have to think about it. It's not just uh, you just write in garden Valley. Um, cause garden Valley, like we mentioned before, just a generational, um, graduating class last year where their their the football team consistently won the conference was going to the playoffs basketball team, state champions, uh, going to state basketball just, uh, and now things have almost been regulated back to normal. I don't expect garden Valley to just plummet to the bottom of the standings and uh, just be irrelevant. I just think they're, they're going to have to fight for it. It's not going to come as easily. Um, I think that they're going to be right there in the conversation. Um, but I, I do agree with the coaches and in picking Horseshoe Bend. I, I think Horseshoe Bend, um, a good choice. They they made the playoffs last year, won that first game against Castle Ford, go up north. They also had to play in, the, in a game in the snow up in Mullen. Um, I mean, talk about a road trip, right, for, for Horseshoe Bend to go – I don't know what that is, seven hours or so to get up there. It's five to Coeur Lane, and then another hour and a half, two to, to Mullen. So a long drive for Horseshoe Bend to get up there. And, and they played well um, losing that game, though. But I, I like the Mustangs to come out strong this year, and and, and we'll see what they can do. But I, I think that's who is end up going to take it. You know, quarterback Colton Meyer, 3,000 all-purpose yards last year. He, he's going to show up again. And uh, probably the favorite to, on paper right now to win that player of the year. Um, and I, I think he'll be the X factor and be the difference in the conference this season. Uh, the defense was stout as well, only giving up 25 points a game. Uh, you know, that that's a thing about that 25 points a game in, in eight man football. That's uh, you just got to make the first man miss and then you're gone. <laughs> and uh, they did a great job at staying home and not letting people get out. And they actually are the ones. Uh, that gave notice the most problems all season uh, notice just barely squeaked by them in that early game this year. They, they play each other this year as well, which that should be a great matchup. Um, but, you know, based on that, I, I, I like, I like horseshoe Ben to come out with it this year. Yeah. Uh, defensively on the, on the defensive line, Keegan Smith, He's a dude. He just, he right. overpowers <laughs> everybody when you watch on film. You, you talked about Horseshoe Bend's schedule real quick. Uh, they were able to pick up a game uh, just in the last couple weeks. Showban, which is a school over in eastern Idaho, they were going right. to try and have a varsity program this year um, and didn't have enough kids come out. So uh, all the teams over there in the east had built in Showban into their schedule. And that, well, now all of a sudden they have an open hole. So 
Water Springs, uh, which is a private school in Idaho City, uh, and and the defending conference champion in Idaho there. Falls. Or, yeah, Idaho City. Right, <laughs> Idaho Falls. <laughs> it's been a long day, all right? It, it has. Yeah. Uh, in Idaho Falls, yes. And they are the defending conference champ out of District 5 and 6. Yeah. They, they are hosting Horseshoe Bend on September 24th. They were able to fill in that date where Showband was supposed to play with Horseshoe Bend. So I think that's going to be a pretty fun matchup as well. Yeah, I like it. I like going after it. And the, in the 1AD2 as well last year, I correct me if I'm wrong, but they also did the max prep rankings and so some of those teams at the last minute like like a castle forge slid into the playoffs um that that weren't uh, that didn't win their conference and and so hey going out and playing a team like water springs it can't hurt to play a team like that and uh, water springs will be tough again like they were last year so kudos to horseshoe ben for making that long drive over to idaho falls and and playing that that's that's a great that'll be a great game yeah so Horseshoe Bend, the uh, preseason favorite in the coaches poll. Number two surprised me. I got to be honest. The Council Lumberjacks picked second yeah. in the preseason coaches poll. Yeah, and you know, I honestly, I think it's because they have the most back out of the rest. I think Garden Valley, um, I just don't think we, we don't know yet. We don't know what Garden Valley is going to be. And then you look at the last two in Tri-Valley and Salmon River, they're both just so young, um, and, and they've got – this, they played a lot of freshmen last year, both only with one win, um, and, and they're going to have a ton of sophomores this year. I think those two teams are factors next year. I think they've got some more growing pains to go through this year uh, with that heavy junior cl or sophomore class. And next year, I think we're going to see both teams jump, and then I think in two years, you might even see a, a flip right of the standings. I, I think you see those teams really show up. I mean, only – Four, is it for 2017 tri-valley was there in the state championship you know or they, they were there um and now you see them down below i think it just comes in waves for these teams and in those towns with such small populations and i like those two teams and this isn't familiar territory for salmon river to be down here i mean how many they're another one of those teams just running out of um, banner space in the gym and on the field for their their championships um, well, but I think they're another year or two away from being factors because just just mostly because of the youth on those teams. Yeah, That's it. I, I think that they've got great foundations and obviously great programs and and they'll be factors in a couple of years. Yeah, they um, so Salmon Rivers not only running out of space for the banners, but they're running out of athletes, period. Yeah, they're the numbers game. So the Salmon River Invitational. Uh, volleyball tournament is this weekend. So I was talking to the new AD athletic director at Salmon River, Brittany Pretty today and said, Hey, is, can you give me a schedule of the games? And she sent it over. And I said, I just want to double check. I didn't see Salmon River on here on this schedule. And she said, yeah, we actually don't have enough players to have a volleyball team this year. We're just hosting the tournament. We're not competing in it, which, which was it blew me away because in volleyball, I mean, you really only need like six to eight players. So I yeah. can't even imagine in football what it's like. Yeah. And there was, it's been like a year or two. There was an article that we, we had on the website about the volleyball team that they moved straight over to basketball, the same six, yeah. the six girls played volleyball. And then they, they just moved right over and played basketball. And, uh, <laughs> I think they even made it to state that year. They yeah. just, uh, like yeah. just just a phenomenal group and again you just lose one or two of those and and there goes the team and it, it's tough when that happens it's tough when you lose just just one or two girls and all of a sudden you 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 don't have volleyball anymore and that's that it's just a shame yeah. for them up there in in riggins to not have that um that'll be interesting right to to have a tournament that you're hosting but not playing in yeah. i'm sure the the girls there will be itching wishing that the ones that wanted to play wish they could be out there playing yeah, it's just, it's too bad. And hopefully it's only a one year thing for Salmon River. So, right. Yeah. So I agree. Tri Valley, Salmon River towards the bottom. Garden Valley was picked third. And you talked about how all those like studs, that great senior class left, right? We think of guys like Corbin Fields and Kobe Kelly. Well, all their younger brothers are there. I yeah. mean, they're all <laughs> coming up, right? You have Hudson Fields and you have Gavin Kelly and Tacoma Kelly. So, right. I mean, you know, it's, yeah, it's, and then it's way. funny because that's the that's the exact same thing I thought. I'm like, well, he just runs in the the family, right? You can just plug him. You just bring in little brother, and he should just do the same thing, right? Right. And so I that's why, that's why I'm not totally discrediting Garden Valley. Um, I the, and you talk about a way to open the season this year. Garden Valley, they're at home, but they're going to host Dietrich and Carrie. 
man, talk about taking a punch to the left and a punch to the right. Just uh, two of the best teams in 1A Division II, both in the state championship last year. Uh, that, that's a heck of a way to start a season, and uh, that'll really tell them where they're at. I think that'll they'll be able to know how they, they fit, and they'll grow a lot in those games, and I think it'll help them uh, as the season goes along. And, and they're probably one of the teams that I'm most excited to see just because we, we just don't know. Uh, we don't know how those young guys are going to do, how the, those little brothers are going to show up. And you got to think that they want to do, they want to outdo their brothers. Yeah. Right. You, I, it makes, I think of the, the Smith brothers, one played at Dietrich, one at Cary, and uh, they go in, you know, Hunter Smith goes and breaks his brother's three point record. So, you know, I'm sure there's a little bit of uh, th- that, that same feeling there in Garden Valley, you know, wanting to go out and beat your brother. Right. I can do better than you. And so we'll see how they do. I'm, I'm curious to see how those brothers show up, how the rest of the team does and, and how they replace all that talent. And I, th- I think they're going to be in the mix. I think once those young guys figure it out, they're going to be right back there as well. Yeah. It's going to be exciting. You talked about that matchup with Carrie, just a fun little side note. Uh, Lane Kirkland is the head coach at Carrie. Jason Yearsley, of course, the longtime coach at garden Valley. Those two went uh, head to head in the eight man all-star game earlier this summer at Canyon Ridge in twin falls. Uh, coach Yearsley coached the West uh, All Stars, and Coach Kirkland from Cary coached the East. So, right, and those, and you know, and they've met in the playoffs the last two years, yeah. um, Cary and Garden Valley. So, <laughs> very <laughs> familiar with each other, those two teams and two coaches. Yeah, for sure. So, all right. So, I I think this was a great start. We've got your official picks on record. We've got my picks. I I, I agree with you, Horseshoe Bend. I think in in one AD two and. Uh, 1A D1. I think we're both on the same page with notice and then 2A we're, we're split, but we'll, we'll revisit this and we'll see how right we were. At the yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. That sounds great. So yeah. Football season is off and running. Is there, is there one game in particular that you're most excited about in this opening weekend? Oh man. Uh, <laughs> where to start? You know, I, let me look, I was, I was making notes of all my game of all the games this weekend. And, you know, I really like, you know, I across any level, um, I, I I really like the um, Lewiston Cuna game. I think it's going to be great. I think there there's matchups everywhere, but I, I'm really looking forward to that eight man uh, rumble that's here in or not the rumble the eight whatever they call it whatever it's branded eight, as eight man that's in Middleton where you got all the eight man teams showing up. Um, but I but like I said, I am I'm excited for that. Uh, that Garden Valley game, I playing. Uh, no, 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 no. They're not playing them this week. Um, no, that's there's not. just a lot. There, there, there's a lot of games, and uh, I'm I'm doing. I'll be at Middleton for their game against Elko, so I think that might be the one I'm most excited about, just because I'm going to be there, <laughs> and I, I'm just ready for football. I I just uh, I want to do something, so it's uh, I'm excited. I'll be there Thursday as well at Capital and Nampa, so. Um, just excited to get back in the saddle and watch some football. That's right. And uh, if you want to see all of the games that we are broadcasting, all you have to do is go to idahosports.com across the uh, navigation bar on the homepage. You'll see game streams. You just click on that and we got the full rundown, 18 games here on the opening weekend and uh, stay tuned. We're, we're going to feature a lot of treasure Valley programs uh, throughout the season as well on idahosports.com. So uh, I'm excited, Logan. This was a good, this was a good primer to get everybody ready for the opening weekend of football. Yeah, and if I'm wrong, I will ha- I will happily be wrong. I'm not a prideful person in those picks, and I will eat all the crow in the world if um, if Tri Valley comes out and wins it all. I will. <laughs> I no, I, I'm not ashamed. And and if if Wilder comes out and and doesn't allow 30 points all season, I will. I will bow down to them. I will. <laughs> Um, so we'll, we'll actually be there for a Wilder game this year. So excited about that when they play Cary. Uh, so we'll be out there in Wilder. So if you're a Wilder fan, uh, be on the lookout for that stuff coming soon. Be there in a couple weeks. But uh, yeah, excited to get underway and uh, and stop talking about it and uh, what we think is going to happen and see what actually happens. Yeah, plenty of results to talk about on next week's edition of the Treasure Valley Prepcast. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Friendly reminder, you can get the audio for this at our website, idahosports.com. You can also download this podcast wherever you get your podcasts. And you can check out the video at the idahosports.com YouTube channel as well as our Facebook page. 
All right, Logan, I'll let you rest up because I know you're going to be uh, busy calling uh, lots of games here on the opening weekend, and uh, we'll, we'll see you back here next week. Looking forward to it, Brandon. Thank you. All right. Thanks for tuning in to the Treasure Valley PrepCast here on Idaho Sports.